Okay, but one other thing I want to say before we start is the name of the website is www.missouri. That's spelled out. Dems D E M S dot org. And right now everything's there, and the, and the information for the live should be there. Yep, I'll repeat that one more time. www.missouri. That's spelled out. M I S S O U R I. Dems. D-E-M-S If you want to be a national delegate, after the meeting, I have some flyers how to be a national delegate that I wrote. I have them back by the button booth we have back there that I've got, and I'll be happy to give you until I run out. So, if you need that, let me know. Uh, and let's start. Okay, I'm going to start the PowerPoint and pass. Uh... Okay. At the door, as you all did, I hope, was fill out a Form A. That means you sign your name and information there. That's very important because that helps the party follow up with you. We're also hoping that you hand out at your meeting Missouri Dems, uh, uh, membership. membership forms that, that you are getting. I hope you make some extras of those. Uh, once you they fill out and sign the form A and you verify that they voted March 15th, and the way you verify that is go to your county election board and ask them now, not later, but right now, that they did that, that when people vote, and it doesn't matter who they voted for, Republican or Democrat. Because in Missouri uh, elections, we don't we don't qualify that. So you get a list of everybody that voted in your county, your ward or township, and that's the list that you ask your election board now to make sure that they take care of, so that you can pick it up probably right at the end of March. Okay, because we're talking about next Tuesday already. I know they're going crazy now setting up for Tuesday. But make sure you talk to them about getting those that information to you uh, by the end of the month. Can I just say something real quick? If you're a Jackson County Democratic Committee member, I'll be pulling all those lists and mailing them to you for you to use if you're in a Jackson County Democratic Committee member. Great. Okay. I didn't know that. St. Louis are making the public at the moment. Election board. Um, all right, that is uh, that that very important. You have that list because that also is how they qualify to vote at your meeting. Okay, so when you at the door, you'll have to fill out form A. You verify that they voted, and once you do that verification, you hand them a form B, which you all see. Okay, that's how they separate into their boxes. As you notice, it says which which candidate they support. They come in uncommitted, and they don't have the fifty percent of those at that meeting. That's also important. Then they can go to a, they can go to one of the two offices if there's only two left. So just to confirm, Bob, so that form will be at the front registration table. So you'll sign in form A, show your identification, and verify that they voted and grab form B. Right. That's correct. And and you're not doing form B. Until you've done the verification. Very important. Okay. That form B, once they fill out their name or their candidate, will go to their caucus, their candidate caucus preparation. So let's go over this right here. One thing is everybody has to be in line, not in the door, not signed in, but in line by 7:30. As it says, the mass meeting chair must determine. Who's the last person in that line? So if you're the chair of your mass meeting in your ward township or county, you you have to be at that table at the end of the line to make sure the last person is in line by 7:30. Now they still can come in, but you also should set up a separate area for for observers, as we call it, at that point. That's really, really important too, because that's very that's always been the case. So they used to lock the doors in some of the areas in St. Louis at 7:30 to make sure nobody else came in. 
but you, you, you can't do that. It's got to be an open meeting. Okay. Mass meeting chair calls the meeting to order. Now, mass meeting chair is again the county uh, county chair or the ward or township of any person. They're chosen by the, if there's a fight over it, whoever got the most votes in the last election is officially the, the chair of the meeting unless the other person can't make it. We hope that if one can't make it, the other could be there. If neither could make it, the, the chair or the committee person has to appoint somebody to be the mass meeting chair. We must have a mass meeting chair prior to the mass meeting. So if you you, if you or your, you know, or you know that your chair is not going to make it, make sure they appoint somebody to be mass meeting chair. Okay. They explain the rules and procedures. We will set out the basic rules and procedures to you if you haven't got them already. I think they're already. Yeah, every packet was mailed over the last two weeks. And if you have not received your packet and you are leading your local mass meeting. Please call or email our office and we will make sure we get you all the information that you need. I know Lauren also has copies of all this information and she can help you as well. Alright, so that's important. If you can, can uh, have to figure out how the rules and etc. And, and don't have your uh, packet, make sure you get it from the state party or Lauren. Okay. So, we, we get to read the, the Missouri Democratic Party allowed, letter allowed, which apportions the delegates according to each presidential preference. Yes? I didn't have any, in my packet, all I had was forms. I didn't that, have right now, you had, you had a booklet. I didn't have any. We didn't have a booklet. Okay, yeah, if you didn't get the booklet, contact the state party, they will send one out to you. It's, it's, it started as an MVP on the front, it's got 20, 30 pages in there with all the copies of all the forms. And that's important to get that booklet because it has the rules for the meeting in the booklet. Yeah, well, hold it up again, people are holding it up. And see, they say MVP on the front. Look in your packet before you call up and make sure it's not there. But you mean four years ago? Yeah. No. So basic the basic rules are the same. The only difference that we have is form MM must be in if you want to be a local delegate on May on April seventh, you must have filed form MM by March thirty first, or at least uh, postmark by that day. Yes. Committee chair is not eligible to be the mass media. Is that true? No, no. That's why not at all. So you repeat the question. Anybody that lives in that district, anybody that the that the committee chair appoints is not him. It should be the committee chair, the county committee chair, or the committee person. It should be the ones. If they can do it. They should appoint somebody. Let's go in the back. Uh, how do they know? Because I don't know who's coming to our meeting. How do they know randomly how they have to fill this form out prior to that the meeting? So, so if you could let me jump in here real quick, I've actually got a really great announcement. Uh, sorry about if you didn't know this yet. We talked to the DNC late last week, and we have that March 31st deadline lifted. Your delegates, or your delegate candidates that are attending your April 7th meeting can fill out that form in and on April 7th or oh, after the 31st. Oh, yes. I did not know that. They didn't know that. So yeah. make sure you have plenty of line form MMs there. If not, all we need is to make a copy of it. Okay, so if you want to run some extra copies, that's fine. Just make sure that you get one to, that, that a copy is sent to the state party and your congressional chair. Okay, you do not have to fill out for a minute in advance. The, 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 the national party lifted the demand, which we fought. I'll tell you that Roy Temple fought by crazy along with Crystal Brickley 
to have that not happen. And the national people, people said it had to happen. Now they're saying it doesn't. They can fill it out that night. All right? They, so make sure you have plenty of extra form MMs for those that want to be a delegate. Yes? Okay. One thing, you might introduce Amanda. What? Amanda. 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 Oh, okay, so what is the deadline for getting MM to the state party? The form MM must be completed by April 7th. They want it by the end of the week. We, in Clay County, we collected and overnight all of them. That's that fine. That's fine. fine. That's great. And you're saying we can just take that form to the mass meeting? Let me confirm that. Bob, can, can candidates fill out that form at the meeting? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so or you can fill out in advance and bring it to the meeting, whatever you want. Yes. That's what I mean. But then, who sends it in? It still has to go to the. Um, the, the, the chair of the meeting and the secretary of the meeting. It's usually the other committee person. Uh, not the, the chair of the meeting should appoint a secretary. They're the ones who make sure that everything's complete. Form, uh, we'll talk about Form C is off the level. We'll talk about that in a minute. But. All the different forms have to be collected and sent to the state party, and and a copy to your congressional chair. Okay, so that's all. Chairs will take uh, responsibility for a lot of those forms that are selected or received on April seventh. Yeah, that's what about Okay. So April seventh, if you, have, you now don't have to have it in advance. So thank you. I just learned it. All right. So. Uh, and there will be a letter announcing the important portion of each presidential candidate. That means in your congressional district, how many people voted for Hillary percentage-wise, how many people voted for uh, Bernie percentage-wise, and the number of delegates will be split based on that percentage. You can kind of figure it out, but we have somebody that's officially going through each one, and he will let you know in advance uh, how many delegates you have for each candidate. All right? That, that'll be announced prior to splitting into caucuses. Okay. Announce, go back. Announce the total number in attendance. And those eligible to participate according to Form A. In other words, if you haven't filled out Form A, you can't participate. And you should not have been handed a Form B. So probably if you haven't filled out a Form A, they didn't check you March 15th, you won't get a Form B and you're not eligible. Okay, but, and that's what that's the, that there we, we said that, that anybody can vote for this at the meeting to vote for uh, alternates and delegates. And just to confirm, Form A is what they signed in to at the very beginning of right. the what? I need some clarification, and I'm going to digress a little bit. What do you mean that they don't? What way do we know that they aren't Republicans or they aren't? There's no way to know. It, I'm sorry, the fact that we can't control how they voted in the primary, and we can't control the Republicans. Or, now you know it. If anybody in the room. At the mass meeting, he says, wait a minute, I know he's, he's a Republican. Then you can challenge somebody at the door or as they come in to your chairman, your mass meeting chairman, saying that guy back there with, the, with that ball cap on is a Republican. And he, he's, he always puts Republican signs in his yard. And I know he's worked for Republican candidates. That's how you do it. Otherwise, we have no control over them sneaking into our meeting. Just like they have no control unless they know you're Democrat, or you sneaking into their mass meetings. And that's just a state law where we don't register as Democrats right. or Republicans in there. So unfortunately, nothing we can do about that. Uh, but we will be right. And we'll not only Democrats who come to our meetings. We're, we're hoping that everybody will resign. But what about the ballot? We don't vote. We don't have to check which one. Uh, they, the, the, they do not put down which ballot you take when you go to vote. They, they, they do give you a Republican or Democratic ballot, but they don't check on your voting history which one you took, only that you voted. 
That's the only thing they check. That's Missouri law. There's nothing we can do about it if you want to just be Democrats and Republicans like other states. Missouri law is very specific that nobody finds out how anybody votes other than the fact that they did vote. All right? I'm sorry. I, I wish we could get the death of Republicans out, and I guarantee you a lot of places will have them just to mess things up and try. Just like yesterday, we kind of messed up the problems. Yeah, St. Louis. <laughs> All right, you ready for the next slide? Yeah. Okay, MM chair instructs participants to split into the room and form a caucus for each presidential preference. Bernie's over here, Hillary's over there. Now, in a room like this, you can split it up and have separate caucuses. We were in a very tight room in Hannibal, which some of you may have, and we had to go to a different room reach caucus, otherwise it would have been too loud and neither of could hear. So think about it, where you're going to be, and if it's not a big enough room, try and find another room in the same location where you can put the other caucus. Because you're going to have two caucuses, I guarantee you. Okay? And you may have more, but right now I guarantee you're going to have two. If, if the undecided, if there are undecided, or the caucus has less than 15 percent of participants, they must choose a different caucus and fill out a new form B. That's up to the general mass meeting chair. Once he splits them into each caucus and he sees that there's 10 people standing there uh, out of 30 people in the room. Uh, and he says, what are you all, are you a caucus there? And they'll say, yes, we're on the side. All right? They're, they get a third of each, of each, uh, of each candidate's delegates. In other words, uh, if, if they each get, let's say there's five delegates and one gets three, one gets two, all of a sudden, basically, one of each goes into the undecideds. And they can elect a delegate based on that. Now, if at the congressional level they don't have 15%, uh, I think they're basically, they, they can split into a caucus there, too. Okay. But you guys can say, hey, come into our caucus. Don't you like Bernie? He's a great guy. Hillary people go in, come into our caucus. You know, and if there's less than 15%, it's the same deal. You try to get them to come to your caucus. Yeah. Good Good percent. Percent. Then they can vote. Then it's 15% of that way, or 15% show up at your meeting and form an undecided caucus. No, it, 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 you could if, they, if 50% said they were uncommitted, which is what the, the vote is. And, but if they don't show up with 15% of the delegates at night, they still have to move on. But be a viable caucus, you have to have 15% of the delegates. As you're meeting as well, to have a viable caucus, you must have 15% of the people in attendance to be to form a caucus. Okay. Uh, Yes. Before we take any more questions, um, let's use the other microphone just so everybody can hear. Yeah, if you have a question, come on up. Raise your hand, Patrick. Oh, Patrick, go ahead and hand me the mic. Do you have a question? Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my blue sub eight, and I have the 5th Congressional and 6th Congressional District, evidently at the same meeting. So, no. no? Okay. No, we said that, that where they were separately, yes. Well, I, I live in Hold on. Blue, I live in Blue Springs, it's never a township, and uh, one time I had the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth congressional districts, and I was chairing it, and I had them split into congressional That's correct. Uh, we're gonna get and to then into the candidate. That's correct. We're gonna get to that. Yeah. We're gonna okay, get to that. So <laughs> I just I just have one question. Uh, I know you're gonna get to that. But I'm already there. 
So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to really cut you off, but I want to get you guys out of here as quick Thank as possible. You. If you guys have a Saturday that you Thank want you. to do things, um, if we can wait and hold off on questions until it comes up on the slide, that'll save us a lot of time and hopefully um, eliminate some confusion. We, we didn't put anything about separate congressional caucuses at your district. You may have more than one congressional caucus at your district. If you look in the back of the book, it, there's this area that if you are split, it'll tell you how many delegates each congressional district is in your caucus, in your mass meeting caucus. Then that's split by the vote in your congressional district, that congressional district for president, each candidate for March 15th. So what you have to do is you have to separate first in a congressional district. And then you separate into the candidates. Okay? So you may have two, uh, four caucuses. If you have three congressional districts, you'll have six caucuses. Unless nobody shows up from one of the congressional districts. You do not assign that vote to another congressional district. It's lost. If somebody does not come from the congressional district that has the votes, you do not assign those votes to another district. Those votes are lost. If you don't have enough people to fill out the number of delegates that you have in a caucus, presidential office, you, you know, you don't have five people running for the five delegate slots, you lose that vote and you lose the alternate vote. Okay. But the, does the candidate lose that vote? Yes. The candidate loses that if they vote. Don't, if, if you only get five, if you get five votes, five delegate positions. Only four people run for those, or only four people show up. You do not reassign that vote. It's lost. Understand that? And all of these instructions are again in that booklet that you should have received and again if you do not receive it we will make sure we get you one and we will talk either after this or you can contact Lauren if you're in the Kansas City area or Missouri or how to it. Okay, we're, we're going to go back. The mass meeting chair appoints a temporary caucus chair for each caucus who collects the form B's from the caucus members, tallies and counts them, and reports the number of participants to the meeting chair. Understand your form B, if you're presidential candidate A, and you're the temporary chair, then you collect all the form, all the form Bs, and you announce that. You still hold on to them, but you announce that number to the mass meeting chair. Mass meeting chair announces the number of participants for each caucus to ensure the numbers of form A and B match. Now, you can't have extra form B's in there, all of a sudden we've got some problems. Then we have to separate people, count them out, and then just count the form B's. Your name is on the form B, which helps us identify anybody that's not there. Because maybe somebody grabs a form B, hides it, and puts it in. So we have to match that. Form A must match form B. So the total of form A, of all form B's, must match the total of form A's. Now we go. Nominations are taken from each caucus for delegate. The voting must be on a written ballot form D. E. That's in your booklet as well. You can make copies of form D. E. I would make two different colors. Separate caucus candidates. Maybe even three, but I would definitely do two different colors. As many form B's as you think people will show up. D's and dogs. D's and dogs, I'm sorry. D's and dogs. <coughs> Make extras of those and put, put them in two different colors. For our mock caucus, I've got some, just some sheets of paper. Yeah. Last time, you had blue paper and red paper, but we had to make a delegate of male and a delegate of female. We're getting into that. Don't worry, we're getting into that. All right. All right. So uh, then we have nominations, and as he said, we have to have equal number of of 
men as women, let's say you have five delegates, you can't have four men and one woman. It's got to be three and two. It'll be one more of one than the other, but that's it. Okay? All names go on the chalkboard. We actually have the chalkboard or paper. Right now you can go to your uh, office keyboard with similar companies. 3M has a big sheet of paper that you can post on a wall and write the names with a magic marker. Okay? Uh, I wouldn't write it with a pen or pencil. I did a marker to mark the names. Okay. Or on a chalkboard. So then the Burnage Caucus, uh, we, we talked about electing a permanent caucus chair, didn't we? Once you have a temporary caucus chair, we didn't talk about this. Once you have a temporary caucus chair, you elect a permanent caucus chair. It'll be the same person. It'll be somebody different. Depends on what the caucus wants. And maybe the Burnage people have somebody they know. They want to be the chair because he, he knows how to do it. And, and he's really good at it. Okay? So they can elect him the chair. They're up, and he appoints the secretary. Okay? And the secretary then holds on to the fees, and after the vote for, for delegates and alternates, uh, he or she holds on to those as well. Okay? Now, and then we, is it we talk about, okay. Um, all names go on the chalkboard. We're done with that. Uh, permanent nominees make two to three minutes to make speeches. Uh, make sure that they hold to it. They're running for a uh, delegate position, alternate position. Make sure they hold to it. You can decide as the chair of the meeting when two minutes or three minutes. I suggest two. That you can't talk about yourself in two minutes. And, Gary, you want to grab the um, microphone that Patrick's holding, please? Yeah. Bob. Bob. Yeah. The form. The form says one minute. I, I know it does. And we kind of said, okay. At the national, at the state convention, we definitely hold up the one. Minute. And it depends on the number of people you have running. We have a whole bunch of people running. You can move it back in one minute. It's up to you as chair to decide how many minutes they get to speak because it's not someplace everybody's going to see. So you can decide. If you have three people running, maybe give them two minutes. Okay? If you have ten people running, a minute's plenty. Let's just make sure everybody has equal amount of time for the same number of conferences. Okay. Are you ready for the next one or is this? Uh, no, and then written form, uh, form D, are then used to elect delegates. Each participant could vote for as many people as there are delegate positions. And you also tell them that they, they can only vote for one more of one sex and the other unless it's equal. And you tell them we must have three men and three women. Okay. They don't have to vote for three men and three women. They can't vote for four women, but they can vote for one person. A lot of people like to pull it with their vote. That way that nobody else gets close and then one person is surely elected to them. But that's just the way some people might think. Persons receiving the highest number of votes based on gender are is elected for one or are elected. Again, that's 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 the one more than the other. So if you have, you know, like seven men and four women in three positions. The top three women get one of the positions. Okay? The top three women, you have six, six both delegates. And you have seven men running and three and three or four women, say four women. The top top uh, four men get get uh, get them. The four positions, and the top three women get the remaining three. Okay, yes, ma'am. Now, transgender friends will have to. Um, They'll have to. Transgender is going to have to pick one or the other. You, is it by their legal uh, driver's license or by their choice? 
That's a great question. We will confirm that um, absolutely with the DNC and Bob and Jessica and I will talk this week. We'll make sure we get that information. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that question. That's a great question. Uh, so she asked if the transgender people have to be moved by their driver's license or by what they say. And we're going to call the DNC this week. We all will be. We did, they did lots of calls from lots of states. I'm sure that somebody's already asked this. And they will tell us which way that the DNC has decided we must go with that, either by a driver's license or by choice. Yes? This form D is in the great session, one to vote for the uh, chair, one for the no. one for the alternate. No, you have separate, separate ballots. If, if you have, again, that's why you might have a look. You may want to do different colors to form D in your own caucus. You know you're going to be in a chair. But generally, Form D, if you're going to let the permanent chair by vote, you can generally, we can say you can do it by hand. But if you have to do a ballot, it must be a Form D, and it has to be kept separate. A vote for, all, a chair, a vote for delegate and alternate. That's three different votes in your caucus. Or, if, if one person is going to be uh, the chair and everybody goes to that one person, you're done. If you have three people running for the delegate position, two men and one woman, and that's all there are, it, then you don't need to do a ballot. You just do it by hand. Three people for three positions. That's that's all, always the way it is. And I guarantee you by the time you get to alternate, that's the way it will be. Okay. Uh, Persons receiving the highest number of votes gets on Jim. We talked about, and we talked about the 50% men and women are one more one than the other if it's not a number of delegate slots. Yeah. If only one delegate is elected, the individual receiving the highest number of votes is elected, female or male. The alternate must be the opposite sex. In other words, if you let one man as a delegate, the alternate must be a female. Because we have equal number of alternates as we do delegates. And I guarantee you, at the state convention last time, almost every alternate got to be a delegate. Because many people don't show the state convention. So that's a really important slot that you must fill. And sometimes at the congressional level, that happens as well. You know, the congressional chair will decide who's going to be the delegate and alternate based on gender. Okay, um, votes are tallied and reported to the firm. All the votes are tallied, and that is announced in the caucus first of things. And then it's reported to the permanent caucus chair, announced the results. All ballots and tally sheets should be submitted to the best meeting secretary, maintained in case of any challenges. In other words, once you're done looking at your delegates and alternates, and you have all your form needs, and that includes the chairman, alternate, or delegate. Then you hand that to the mass meeting chair, the general chair of the meetings. Okay, and then there might be a challenge. And we've had a lot of challenges, not, not a lot each time, but a lot over the years. Uh, there's usually one or two each, each time around. But someone says, no, I, I know I had, I, I, I had my people there. I had 17 people voting for me. And only 13 bat form D's were there, and the other person all of a sudden had 14. And I got kicked, I got knocked out, that's not right. So they challenged, which they had to do the state party. Let's go on. Uh, after delegates are elected, the nomination shall be open again for all friends. All rules are the same, except that uh, if you have an odd number of men and women, the opposite number of women and men should be elected to the alternate slots. Okay. And then uh, they have an example. It says uh, three females and two males are elected as delegates. The alternate should be three males and two females. If it's an even number, it's an even number of alternates as delegates, men and women. All delegates and alternates shall attend a congressional caucus on April 28th and the Democratic State Convention on June 18th in the Lodge of the Four Seasons. 
Okay, it's a beautiful area. If you've never been there, it's a beautiful location. Uh, the only thing we had that was, was negative was the long stairway up from the front of the lodge to the top of the top of the. Uh, see, I, I had a hard time finding that. Donna, you, microphone. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, I know of a, a county caucus where um, a, a group of people came, they were all supporting one or two candidates, and after the first, their two candidates were nominated, they asked that the nomination be closed, and they, because they had the majority of the people in the room, they, they passed that. Is there any feeling on the part of the party about closing nominations? Early. In other words, they got, they got their people nominated. They want to close right now. Uh, I, I, I know it must be repeated a few times. Are there any more nominations? Are there any more nominations? Are there any more nominations? Does this get back to a, a parliamentary procedure then? That's what I'm talking about. Robert. Well, then parliamentary procedure is just that. You, you can't close nominations. Well, that's what we're talking okay. about. Yeah. And, and until, until it's mentioned three times, and that's very important, you cannot close nominations until the chair, the caucus chair, says, are there any more nominations? You know, are there any more nominations? Are there any more nominations? And I declare nominations closed. That's the only way you can close nominations. If somebody puts their hand up, they must take that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's that's Robert's rules, and we're following that directly. So if if that happens, sounds like that happened to her. No, but a friend of mine in that county. Okay. okay. She heard somebody, about needs to, somebody needs to rise rise to a point of parliamentary procedure. Say no, you can't do it like that. All right. But we're right. telling you as the permanent chair, if you immediately, as the permanent chair of the meeting, the the, the main chair. As committee person or our chair, you have to make that stoppage immediately. Okay? If, if, if someone doesn't know the fact that we have that parliamentary procedure, you as the chair must stop that, those nominations until the, until the three, our nominations, the more nominations. You have to go into that caucus and say, wait a minute. You may be in the other caucus, you may be a very personal the other caucus. But you're the chair, and that's this doesn't matter. You can stop the nominations. Okay. Uh, all delegates and all friends, we talked about that. Attend the two. And that's really important that they show up at both. Okay? Because they get to vote at both. If they're, if they're elected on the night of the meeting, they get to vote at both events. And that's important for those running for national delegate, and I can explain that later. Okay, go ahead. Next. The permanent caucus chair will report the results of the caucuses, including names and addresses, and email them of the, the, to the meeting chair. Okay. And it is critical that all delegate and alternate information is complete and legible. And what we're going to be doing is filling out a form C which will announce the fact that this person was elected at Delhi as a burning person. And you put all the burning people together in each caucus. You have more than one forest in district. Okay? Hillary once in a while. I'm sorry. I, I'm just thinking, these were 4-H, and that's how it's All right, I'll do Hillary next. Okay, do you understand that? The Hillary people must be kept separate of the Bernie people. Don't mix them up. It's important for us to be able to make sure for because uh, we have to keep track of all the different delegates and all the different alternates at the state party. And the way we keep track is after the, the meeting, your secretary, your caucus secretary, fills out Form C based on the votes of each caucus. And that's alternates and delegates, both. And again, if 
we don't have enough votes to fill the delegate position, you lose that vote and the alternate slot. All right, so if you have five, five Hillary delegates and only four people are in their meeting, the, the fifth is not going to sign somewhere else. Okay, go ahead. Let's just make sure it's critical that all of the information is legible so that you have um, the appropriate information to contact these folks. Um, okay. Now, the mass meeting chair will announce all delegates and alternates. And he will provide the location and point of contact for the Congressional District Office on April 28th. You will receive, if you wish, a form F at the mass meeting. That's the one you must fill out to be a national delegate at the April 28th meeting. Okay, that must be filled out and sent to the state party by the 14th of April. Okay. That's really important if you want to be a national delegate. Okay, you can give it to your chair, or I would suggest you send it in, and the congressional chair get a copy as well. Because when they go to their meeting, they want to make sure that what they have goes against what the state party has. Okay. Then there's other business announcement again. So we're asking again that you mention again to join the state party. Please take one of these forms. And you're probably going to have to copy those as well. And we want every, we need as many people to join the state party as possible. They do not have to join the state party to be a delegate. But we ask them to please do so. It's costing us a lot of money to put on that state convention. And we need to cover as much of the cost as we can. They raise it, they, they have donations from you know big big people like Costa or whatever and different different uh, unions donate and that's great. But if we get a whole bunch of people to be state party members, we don't have to collect as much money from outside sources. We use the inside. Plus, helps us uh, if we get a whole bunch of people, even hire somebody else to do a different job than somebody's doing two or three jobs right now. Like they're doing in the state party right now. We are very short staffed and um, we have little resources right now. But I think it's important to encourage anybody who wants to be a delegate should really be a paid dues member of the party. While we can't explicitly require that, please strongly encourage. Your delegate candidates. Yeah, we're asking. We're asking anybody who wants to be a national delegate to join the state party. I think Gary's holding up something. Yes, Bob. The form, uh, the triplicate form, says April fifteenth. Uh, the slide mistake. says April fourteenth. And we'll take it to the fifteenth. All right, because the form does say that. And the slide was, I mean, I made a mistake putting 15th on the form. Well, the other form that's on the website says April 10th, so we have three different dates. So the latest that was, date. That, that, that was not caught when we printed that out either. I caught it on the form and changed it to the 15th, and I did that. So we will update that form on the website. Good catch, Gary. Again, I know this is confusing and complicated, and there are errors and mistakes, and we take full responsibility for that. But we do ask for some patience because this is a very complicated process. We, we had over 100 changes, 100 changes from 2012 to 2016. A lot of little minor changes in the in the in the. Uh, actual plan and the dates all totally changed and some we caught and some we didn't and i'm sorry about that uh, the dates totally changed uh, so the really who say one thing is is okay i will take them to the 15th but and that's postcard but we suggest you get in early we suggest you join the state party if you want to be a, na a national delegate Again, you don't have to, but we hope you do. Okay. Uh, next, then, other business, any, any other business, some guests running for state rep. We don't want them to do it beforehand. We want them to do it after, so those can leave that want to leave. Okay. Then the mass meeting general chair, that's the committee person, or the chairman of the party the committee, uh, or the appointed chair, then adjourns the meeting. 
You don't have to have a vote for adjournment. He or she can decide that the meeting's over and we don't want to fight for any Hillary people to burn people. Just teasing. So there we go. We're, and again, we ask two things. That you show up on those two days is one thing. And that whoever wins the national convention in Philadelphia in July is our candidate and everybody gets out and works as hard as they're working out for their candidate as they do if it's the opposite candidate. We're all Democrats. Okay, um, I think we have some form apps here. Uh, again, you don't have to fill out form MM, but we, we hope you do and bring it to the meeting totally filled out. That way it saves time for everybody. Yes. So if someone arrives at the meeting knowing that they want to be a delegate, they form, they fill out form MM right then? That's correct. And then form... She asks anybody who wants to be a delegate and has not filled out form MM and shows up at the meeting, we still want them to fill out form MM to be a delegate. They can do it that night. But we want them to fill out form MM so that they can be elected a delegate. We want to keep track because Form MM has a lot more information on it than Form A does. And it's important for all delegates to fill out Form MM. If you're planning on being elected a delegate or an alternate, now we're asking alternates to do as well. Okay? That way, you can do it. Again, it, it could be just plain, uh, plain piece of paper, but you have, if, if you have that, you have to make a copy to send to the congressional chair. Okay, if you don't have the three part form. If you need more three part forms, contact the state part. If you need that booklet with all the uh, forms and information out of our meeting, etc. Call call on Monday, ask for talk to her, put her down after this meeting. Uh, we're gonna adjourn the meeting now. We've got uh, a couple oh, more slides. Just go through this contact information. Oh, Everybody wants to write it down. You have to see the information there. That's where it goes to in Jeff City. You can email it. You can scan it and email it at the bottom. You can fax it. And that's the correct fax number, which is not correct on the forms, by the way. Or you can mail it to Jessica. No matter what, it goes to Jessica at the state party. Jessica's not here today, she's moving. So, uh, but she is the person in charge. She's the one handling everything to do with caucuses and delegates. Can we have that slide before up that has the address of contact? Thanks. Oh, that one there? Yes. Okay, there you go. Um, on April 7th, we will be at the State Party Headquarters. My cell number is on the packet in the very front page. I will be taking a call for myself from noon on, on April 7th. Uh, we had 300 calls in 2008. I expect a lot this time. What is your name again? I'm Bob Levine. If you want to write my phone number down. You got it right here, Bob. Here, well, this is Jessica and no one's contact information. Oh, there, there it is, right there. I'm sorry. Still was Any questions ahead of time, please don't hesitate to call. You can call in an hour. You can call on April 7th in the morning. You can call me. Please do not hesitate to call. Oh, sure. uh, will be available? We will email the PowerPoint to everybody uh, who is here today, as long as you provided your email address on that Form A when you signed in. Um, Warren will make sure that that is emailed out to you. We will also put this PowerPoint on the website. Does anyone want to run a office or do you understand what we're supposed to do? And the website has all of the forms that we just discussed, all of the documents. It'll have this PowerPoint. Um, 
the website is a really good resource for you to look at and find all this information. We have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a question. Um, I'll repeat I it. I had somebody who asked if they could just show up at the state convention to be selected as a national delegate yes. without being selected as a delegate. Yes. Yes. Why well, not Jim Hyatt? They, they must, okay, she asked if you didn't hear, do you have to be elected a local delegate to be elected a national delegate at either level, both the state convention level and the congressional level, and the answer is no. But you must fill out the proper form. Form F to be elected on April 28th, form AL, which is on the website, or you can get it from the state party. Form AL must be in uh, to the state party by May 15th again, I think it is. Yes, sir. I know you have a question about this. Can the mass meeting chair participate in the caucus? Yes, mass meeting chair, once, once, he, once he appoints a temporary chair, and by the way, he can appoint himself a temporary chair of a caucus. If he's for Hillary, and he wants to be the chair of the Hillary caucus. He can appoint himself a temporary chair, but when he gets selected, to be the permanent chair. And he can vote. This is only to start the meeting, and then basically he can either appoint himself to move on, or appoint somebody else to the caucus. Okay, any other quick questions? Do we want to run with my caucus or not? No. No. All right, just understand, and uh, just understand that you must have. Just while, just while we finish up here, let Bob right. finish, and then everybody will okay. be free to leave, and we'll answer any individual questions after that. All right. Please understand that we want you to have plenty of form B's. Please understand that you should figure out, based on previous offices, how many people you expect at your caucus. I spent more of this time than we're there four years ago. We only have one candidate. This time we have two. And each caucus, we're asking each caucus, Hillary and Bernie caucuses, to think about appointing people. And let's talk about being elected a national delegate based on your presidential choice. The way to be elected a national delegate, and I always tell people this and it's in my, my brochure, is think about people from other areas within your congressional district. Ask people from other areas to be elected a local delegate. They can't vote for you at either level unless you're elected a local delegate. Okay. You get numbers of people from different uh, wards, townships, or counties that are going to be elected separate from where you live to be elected that are going to come and back to you. So let's say you get 15 Hillary people out there in 15 different wards, townships, or, or a little bit of a county to go to their meeting and get elected a delegate in the Hillary campaign, in the Hillary caucus. And all of a sudden you have 15 people. Then you can contact somebody else in your organization, Hillary or Bernie, that has 10 people. All of a sudden you put those two groups together and you've got 25. You can form a slate. At the state convention, that's going to happen a lot. From all over the state. That's, that's, it, it doesn't matter which congressional office. Because the vote for the 15 state, state delegates are based on the statewide vote. In 2008, we split right down the middle between Hillary and, and Obama. The Hillary people were fighting every day to find another delegate. I must have gotten a call every day from one of the two leaders of that group trying to challenge different things. And I said, no, no, no. And it turned out exactly right down the middle. We don't know how this vote will go statewide. We don't know how this vote will go in your congressional district. But if you want to be elected a national delegate, even at the statewide level, if you have 15 people, you can find 15 people in your pillar group, your burning group. Uh, you can find you know, people with 15 or 10 or 5 or 7 delegates, and you can form a slate. 
The state party will not sponsor a slip. The state party will not choose the delegates. The state party is totally devoid of who we're backing. We're not backing anybody except the final uh, elected candidate at the national convention. That's who we'll back as a party, and that's what we, we decide. As, uh, me as chairman of the uh, congressional uh, Congressional Caucus Chair of the Delegate Selection Committee. That's how we will decide who will act as president. So don't expect the state party, you know, to lean one way or the other because we will not, they will not, nobody will, this part of the party operates. But you can form a slate. You can hand out flyers at your congressional meeting with your slate. I know in the second congressional district, except for two positions, the slate won. And we had just one candidate in 2012, so there was no question. Now, uh, on the state website, you want to know how many votes, your total votes you have in your congressional district, that's on the state party website. It's also in the, the booklet, I, if you want to Come and see me after the meeting. He's in there as well. And I'll tell the fourth, fifth, and sixth district delegates. Again, each one will be separated by the vote. So think about it your congressional district. Other people you know, either through your work as for your candidate or just friends in other areas, tell them to get after their caucus on April 7th, get elected to be a delegate for your candidate. I mean, if you're a Hillary person, they're elected to party delegate, that doesn't mean any good. That'd be candidate, supporting your candidate when they go to their meeting. And you form them together, and uh, you can find other people in your congressional district that have a group of delegates, and all of a sudden you can merge it. And once you get that merged, you have 25 delegates to go out and find other delegates, other groups. So if that's how you get elected a national delegate. Now, some, now, again, in the second commercial district, we had a man and a woman elected that had, did none of it. They gave a very cute speech, very sharp speech on his part. Hers was extremely cute, and she got elected a uh, national delegate. The state convention, her husband gave a very, very sharp speech in his one minute, and he got elected a national delegate at the state, at the state convention. So they went as a pair, it was kind of neat. Uh, so that, that's the way that is. People are asking me all the time about the, uh, the uh, 13 uh, super delegates, if you want to call them their other names, we have one sitting in the audience now. Uh, they are not committed to any candidate, but they can choose a candidate. They're, they're not, nobody can tell them what to do. No, they, they, they decide themselves. I have not heard how they are <coughs> broken down now. I don't care. It's not my business. It's not anybody's business but theirs. Now, they may want to announce that they're for so-and-so. Great. That's their decision. But to us, they're just basically as the state party. They're super delegates. Non, they haven't chosen yet, as far as we know. And we don't care. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Um, I think I've spoken to a lot of people that are here because they want to be a national delegate. And they, oh, sorry. Um, they're kind of looking for a Cliff Notes. Uh, okay. That's what I'm, that's what I got to do. Okay, so if we're going to do a Cliff to do list from today, we need everyone to, you need to figure out who you want to support, Hillary or Bernie. You need to, Go and vote on Tuesday. If you don't vote on Tuesday, you cannot vote, nor can you run right. on April 7th. So make sure you vote on Tuesday in the presidential preference primary. From that point, just to-do list for them, fill out the form M&M. Right. Make sure you pledge, and fill, the, uh, fill out the form pledge ship. From there, what are the next to-do list bullet point numbers? Okay, uh, two things. One, you vote on April, on March 15th, Tuesday. And you make sure your friends that you want to go to their meeting votes on Tuesday. That's bullet point number one. 
Number two, once you get elected or not, at your local level, no matter what, you fill out Form F, which you will receive at that meeting, or there's some in your packet, I think. If not, contact the state party, but they're on the website. That's the one for the national delegate at the congressional level on April 28th. Okay, that's bullet point number two. Number three is to make sure your friends are elected the same candidate, delegate, or alternate at their local uh, mass meeting at, again, Warren Township or County. Number four is at that April 28th meeting, first of all, you make sure all your people show up April 28th. That's the next thing. I'll get you into that. Yeah. And, um, that's, that's really important. If they get elected a delegate, they don't show up at that delegate. So make sure they all show up to your congressional meeting on April 28th to vote for you. And if they, as at the same time, you tell them who else you want them to vote for. Because they made a deal. It's horse strength. It's political horse strength. And next, ma'am. Yes. Carol Cole. Here you go. I'm Carol Cole at COE. Uh, what I'm asking is a process four years ago not applicable to the selection process uh, this year, this election year. What, you, what are you uh, saying? Uh, what has changed? Okay, what has changed? In all reality, now that we've eliminated the four men, because we always had people running for delegates fill out the form and then at the meetings. Now that we've eliminated the need to send it in early, there's nothing changed. And basically, I mean, there are minor, very minor changes, but basically, the form numbers or the letters are the same. The dates are the only thing that changed. You know, we, 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 had, we had a, a February primary last time, uh, which cost us causes us problems. Uh, and, and we had some other things of dates, but otherwise, uh, like April 26th was, was the Thursday night we had for the uh, congressional meeting. But otherwise, it's basically the same process. The process is the same. The forms you fill out are the same. Okay, it's all the same. The minor changes we made uh, in the process have nothing to do with that level. Really more of what we have to do is the state party. Thank you. So that, that, that sense. It's been, if you did it four years ago, it's the same process. And again, I know this is super complicated and confusing for, you know, for some people. It's confusing to me, and especially if you haven't done it before. If you have any questions, contact Bob, contact Jessica, call, call the party headquarters. Call Warren, she'll be a great resource. Um, we are here to help you and walk you through anything you need. I know a lot of people in the audience have been asking questions about where their local mass meetings will be held on April 7th. Warren will have that information on the Jackson County Democrats website. The party will have that information on our headquarters website. And Warren's also going to email that list out to everybody who gave us their email address here today. And we will make sure that you have the information that you need um, on locations for April 7th. We don't have locations in the book, but we do have the number, total number of delegates for your county, ward, or township in the back of that book that everyone as the chairman should receive, and again, if you haven't received it, get it from the state party. Uh, that has a breakdown. It's not has a breakdown by candidates, because we don't know what that is yet. That's Tuesday. So make sure you get all your friends out of the book. Let's go on to a put number two. Is if you don't get elected, then we do not have alternates at the congressional level. Only state party level because we have so few. We couldn't assign each congressional district that we thought that was unfair. So they're all going to be voted on at the state convention. And last year, four years ago rather, every alternate that went to the national convention got a delegate uh, pass every night because a lot of delegates didn't show up for some reason or another. Or they had to go home early that day. I think we had 
two of them, and I'd say, I got sick, but I managed to get over it in time. <laughs> Let's um, delegate and run as an alternate. Encourage your friends right. and people in your areas to run as both delegates and alternates. This is a really exciting year, and we're we're looking forward to getting everybody involved. Glad I'll repeat it. Did you say you guys have at large form? We do not have ALC yet. So you can download that at large form from the website um, and put it right there from home. Yeah, and 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 again, if you don't get elected at the local level, congressional level. And you still want to be a delegate, fill out the form AL, which means at large. And that's the state convention, June 18th. Make sure that your friends that came and voted for you at the local level get to the state convention. So you've got to understand we're going to have a lot of people running. And the more people you can get into your little corner, the more and better your chances are getting elected a statewide delegate. Because it can take just 15 votes, maybe, to be elected to say why other because the votes are all spread out among all the different people running. And then they can bullet you, just as I talked about. In other words, only vote for you, that way nobody else gets to vote. And you, you hope you get elected that way. Or you can form a, uh, another group at the same convention of your candidate and form a slave. Generally, we're talking to the uh, to the statewide people for each candidate right now and asking them to choose, make sure they choose the people they want to be elected delegates and they can make, they may put together a slate. That's not up to us. But this training stay was strictly on district level delegates. That's all. Seven of those, there are only 15 at large delegates. So we encourage everybody to participate in this local, county level first to increase your chances of becoming a national delegate and attending national convention. And last thing, uh, selling buttons in the back, $3 each to five. Bernie and Hillary. Thank you. Anything, any other questions? No, I see none. I'm gonna I'm gonna announce as the permanent chair of the meeting this caucus is adjourned.